I'm just curious at, at this point, does do these sort of uh, harrowing situations where you've got to drive drive the team down the field and make a play kind of do or die, or have they begun, begun to feel um, common to you? Or do you feel especially relaxed just by, by the number of times you're in those situations? Yeah, like I said, you know, several weeks ago, it's not a situation you want to be in every week. Obviously, you like to be in four minutes, be able to ice the game, but um, – we found ourselves in that situation multiple times throughout the season, and, and there's a ton of confidence and belief in one another that uh, we're going to march the thing down and, and play our game and, and finish with a win. And, you know, today for the fourth time, we were able to do that. Teresa? Ryan, how much does it help having Derek uh, able to rip off a 94-yarder? He catches that screen from you in overtime and then finishes off with the uh, Wildcat there in overtime. Oh, it's huge. You know, I've said it out there on the field. He, he, he makes a big impact for us week in and week out. You know, some weeks it shows up bigger on the stat sheet. And, and this is one of those weeks. And the 95 yard was huge. We just had the turnover. And for him to really bounce back, for us to take the lead like that, um, was huge. It was, it was a tough run, inside run, a run that uh, we run consistently. You don't know if it's going to be one yards or, or 95 yards when you hand off to a guy like Derek. So, Really cool to be able to uh, to see increase that thing, make the safety miss, and obviously um, a special thing about Derek is his speed that he's able to to go 95 and not just uh, 20, you know, like a lot of big running backs. John Glennon. Hey Ryan, um, it was funny talking to uh, AJ a minute ago. In, in one breath, he said you're kind of the, the general out there and, and demand and you demand, uh, you know from the guys, but then he also said on the, uh, on the touchdown play there, the, the overtime one that he just told you to, to throw him the, uh, the football. Was was that the case in overtime? Did he mention that in the huddle? So he just uh, toss it to me. Oh, he had said that earlier in the, in the drive, um, during one of the, uh, the timeouts, um, you know, he, he plays a lot of confidence and, um, uh, with, with the receiver like that, you see one-on-one -on -one matchup, uh, you'd like to take advantage of that. So, um, the opportunity didn't come up for a few plays there, but you know, down in the in the red zone, we finally got that one-on-one -on -one situation, and we saw what AJ was able to do. Eric, hey Ryan, uh, John, who obviously goes out, but uh, you know, you, you kept that connection going with Anthony Furkser. What's the confidence level with him? You know, especially on on that last drive uh, to end regulation, you found him a few times. What's the confidence there with with Furkser? Yeah, I have a ton of confidence, Perk. He's made a, a bunch of huge plays for us uh, over the past really two years. You know, you can see um, some big third down conversions he made, and guys draped all over him and you know, throwing the ball uh, high and away. He's able to make tough catches uh, through contact, which is huge, converting some, some big third downs for us. And then in that two minute drive, he found a way to get open. Um, you know, one of them was a short throw, and he's able to, uh, to crease it there and make a big play. So um, obviously, Missed having Johnny out there, but a ton of confidence at Ferks out there. TD. Yeah, you guys uh, take over on what the 24 yard line with a minute 50 left. What do you say to those guys in the huddle? Because it always seems like in those situations, everything is just like clockwork. It runs smoothly, and you guys end up in the, in the end zone. Just go play confidently, one play at a time, and, and do what we do. You know, this is a situation, uh, it's not new for us. Let's just go do what we do. And I think there's a ton of confidence. I know I have a ton of confidence in the guys around me that we're able to do that. And we showed again today that we can. It's, it's almost, go ahead. It's, it's almost like in those situations, you're basically unflappable. What, like, how do you develop that confidence? Because that's a situation where a lot of, you know, people will be very nervous. So for you, how do you channel in and manage to find so much success there? Got a lot of experience at this point. Um, you know, play a lot of football, been in that situation a lot of times. And I think ultimately it comes down to preparation and belief in the guys around you. Um, ton of confidence that we have the guys to get it done. Um, Art does a great job of mixing up the calls, keeping the, the defense on their heels. And um, really, any call that comes in, I feel like we're going to have a good spot to go with the football. So when you have that kind of belief in the guys around you, O-line's protecting, guys outside are making plays. Uh, there's really nothing to be hesitant about. It's just go make the plays. Paul. Ryan, I know you've been in a lot of big, meaningful, fun, entertaining games. Um, you know, with this one fresh top of mind, do you feel like it ranks uh, up there? Yeah, it's definitely fun, man. It was uh, exciting. Uh, the ups and the downs up early, 
Uh, then lull there, a couple turnovers in the third and early fourth quarter, and um, you know, go down. And then to, to be able to see the defense make a, a big stop on a two-point play um, there late in the fourth quarter, get us the ball back. They kept us in it by making that play. Uh, get the ball back with plenty of time and, and a ton of confidence to, to go uh, tie the game up and then obviously win the, the uh, toss in overtime. You know, I told the guys, let's, let's go win it. It's our opportunity. Let's go take advantage of it and go win it. And that's exactly what we did. One of the most fun you've been in? One more time. One of the most more fun games you've been involved in? Yeah, no doubt. I haven't been involved in too many overtime games. I'm not sure how many I've been involved in, um, but definitely not too many. So uh, to be able to, to win the way that we did with the, you know, tying it up as, as basically time expired and then uh, go win it first drive overtime, it was huge and, and a ton of fun for sure. Buck? Yeah, Ryan, if I could go back to the 94-yarder by Derek, is that a play that you checked into? It looks like you saw something at the line of scrimmage and, and maybe adjusted. Yeah, we go to line of scrimmage with, with several plays most of the time. Not most of the time, a lot of the time. And, um, you know, depending on the front coverage, safeties, uh, linebackers, it could be all types of different things. But, uh, you know, we made the adjustment, and then, you know, Derek in, in the O-line and the receiver did the rest. Terry? Ryan, this offense seems to be able to overcome, you know, and get win shootout type of games and even overcome when it has a couple of turnovers. What is that mindset like and what brings that about that you guys have been able to overcome things uh, throughout this season? Yeah, obviously, we don't want to turn the ball over. I mean, we need to be able to clean that up. We've been pretty good so far this year. Um, you know, having two today, especially the interception, I'm not, I'm not happy with. Uh, Cleet did a good job there. I tried to hit him in stride over the shoulder when really I had the whole whole field. I could have uh, could have threw it him down, slowed him down a little bit. So I'd uh, like to have that one back, obviously. But proud of our guys. I think we've been through a lot of adversity, been through a lot of tough situations, and our belief never wavers. Obviously, don't want to put ourselves in that situation, but our belief and confidence in one another never wavers, and uh, it continues to grow the more times you're able to execute in those situations. Joe? Yeah, Ryan, I wanted to ask you on that TD to uh, A.J. Brown. It looked like maybe you guys went spike there. Were you right there deciding in your head, is it a spike here? Or do I like what I see? What's, what's the, what's the uh, you know, the protocol on that particular type of play? Yeah, that call came from Art. Um, really, it's, it's a situation that we practiced multiple times, talked through multiple times. You're able to get an extra shot, you know, into the end zone. Time clock's running there. If you clock it, you're probably only going to get one shot into the end zone. If you're able to take a take a shot, um, could get two off. So, uh, just kind of a uh, statistical game there. Um, just knowing the situation you're in and, and trying to take advantage of it. Jim, hey Ron, obviously you're working in a in a stressful situation at the end of regulation, and then again in the overtime where you got to be perfect. What, what is the euphoria like when you win on kind of a walk off uh, fashion like you did? It's huge, you know. It's uh, the emotional roller coaster of, of really the, the second half. Um, it's draining, honestly. You know, I, when you finally win, it's it's uh, you know level ten excitement. And you're so fired up that we're able to get it done, uh, and then right after you almost feel uh, exhausted just because you laid everything out there, and uh, it's so emotional. You, you got so much into it, and uh, for whatever reason, when your emotions are tied to it like that. It, it will drain you uh, once it once it calms down. So uh, definitely an emotional win for us, and, and proud we were able to pull it pull it out. And, and you've you, you've got to turn around now. Uh, you've got to celebrate this one, obviously. But what about the challenge you face here a week from today against an undefeated Steelers team, team coming in here? Yeah, no doubt. Ton of respect for for Pittsburgh. We uh, you know thought we were playing them a few weeks ago, so uh, got to study them and, and start our game planning for them. So watched a lot of tape on those guys and have a ton of respect for their defense. Obviously, extremely talented. Their front is is really good. They do a great job being disruptive in the run game, getting pressure in the pass game. Uh, their secondary is good as well. So uh, we're gonna have to come out um, and and really prepare well all week and come out and execute well on Sunday to to get it done what we need to. Gentry. Yeah, Ryan. It, no secret by now how much Derek means to your team, but. Do you catch yourself being odd sometimes at what he's able to do? And have you ever been around the kind of impact he's able to make in a game like this? 
No, it's huge. You know, he's consistent. So um, I don't know if I'm just numb. I don't want to say numb to it. Uh, like I expect it at all. But um, when you've seen him do it, you know, I saw on tape before I got here, uh, him make some huge plays. Um, then last year I get here and I get to see it in person. So um, he just has that rare size, strength, and speed combination that it's really extremely rare. You know, most guys have the strength or, or size and they're able to make those tough yards inside, um, really run over guys or be physical. But then the thing that makes Derek special is he has the speed. Once he's in the open field, all right, he makes a safety miss. Now he turns on the gas and, and he's able to go 95. So with a lot of big physical backs, you'll see, you know, 20 yard runs. And with Derek, he has the ability to, to take it the whole way. So, um, you know, it's really cool. I wouldn't say uh, I'm surprised or in awe, but it's really cool and it's fun to watch, uh, you know, him make a, a huge play like that. You kind of see it open up a little bit from the backfield once I handed it off. I uh, see him make the safety miss and then uh, couldn't quite see what angle the rest of the guys had on him. But, you know, once he opened up, you could see that no one was going to catch him. So definitely a ton of fun watching him work. Last one, Kyle. And you're, I think, 14 total touchdowns now, two interceptions, got a a handful of game-winning drives for an undefeated team. How, how, what is your reaction to the idea of, of Ryan Tannehill for MVP? I'm just trying to win games. You know, go out and play football. I have a lot of things that I can clean up. Um, those types of things will take care of themselves. Um, for me, it's just about going out, performing for my team, leading my team to wins, and playing good football. And like I said, those things will take care of themselves.